Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's eSpeaks, we're talking about optimizing data access practices and what it means to democratize data while also maintaining solid governance. To discuss that, I'm joined by Balaji Ganesan, CEO and co-founder of Privacera. Balaji, very good to have you with us today. Thank you for having me, James, and excited to be here and looking forward to this. So there's a lot going on with the data market. I, I hear one of the, the, the mega trends is the idea of democratizing data. So companies have, you know, the, the employees have more access to data faster and it enables the entire company to move faster. As close as you are to the market, as you survey how companies are handling data access, what are some of the common issues or challenges you see these days? Yeah, I think it's, um, we are, um, I think we are in a very interesting phase of the market. Um, there are a few trends that has been happening over the last few years, I would say. Um, uh, I think one of the first trends to, uh, I would say, uh, we've been in this journey for the last few years has been the migration to the cloud. Right? And, and, mm -hmm. and if you think about cloud, cloud is not just operational, but um, cloud gives a lot of, it takes away a lot of uh, friction that was existing in the on-premise world where in order for you to get access to data or any tool, you have to go through IT. Mm -hmm. and, and this migration to the cloud is actually democratized in a way that there's new tools and offering uh, that have come in that businesses can use without involving a lot of IT. Um, and they can empower themselves. And, and we have seen with the rise of Snowflake, Snowflake is about $2.7 billion company right now. And right. you see other companies coming up and they really um, rode this wave and created less friction, more simple use products that you know business teams can use themselves without needing a lot of it and other teams so in effect what we have seen in the first wave is around the cloud and the cloud migration migration to the cloud actually helping you know business teams now to say so every parts of the enterprise now you don't have to be really technical to go and use a product mm -hmm. uh, you can go and and if you know about running BI and analytics and reporting, you can use tools today. That doesn't mean it's completely self-service, but it's reduced that friction and dependency that used to exist in the world part of it. The other part has been, is around, I mean, the, the use cases that have come up and, and the power of what is shown to companies is the power of data. So the best companies today are data driven and, and they make decisions faster, they make products faster, more easier, depending on data. So that has shown the executives to the investment areas that needs to happen. So that has followed over the last few years as well, where you know, most companies have a data program today. They have invested in creating roles like a chief data officer mm -hmm. who is responsible for demo, like data initiatives part of it. So, so those are things, positive things happening. But on the other hand, in the, the challenges continue to compound. And one of the big challenges is in data governance in general. Mm -hmm. right? You have mm -hmm. visibility policy standards around how different parts of the organization can do that. And those have not gone in the same pace. So while adoption has gone faster in some cases, the governance security has not gone in the same pace in terms of keeping up, catching up with that part of it. So it's a lot of the uh, way companies do governance and security is still rooted in some of the older ways. It's fairly manual. Mm -hmm. And what it does is then it creates friction. If these two things are happening at the same time, it creates friction for end users right now. And so where on one hand, business teams want to get access to the data as fast as possible, as frictionless as possible, the latest and greatest data. On the other hand, security and privacy teams are like, hey, wait a minute, like we can't give you a complete access. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have to, uh, you know, make sure that it is gated. And but, how do you balance this new age of frictionless availability of data and governance and and that's something companies continue to struggle as part of it so what we see in most cases is companies end up either in two categories one is a, they have locked down the data so much that you have to go through a lot of hoops and a lot of approvals to get access to anything and and so then defeats the power that cloud brings in on some of these tools brings in on the other hand uh, they have gone with the innovation culture and say let's get users hands on to the data but they are reintroducing risk and they understand they have risk and and that keeps them uneasy in terms of the amount of risk that introduces in terms of wrong people touching wrong data so we see categories of both or a mix of both in many cases uh, where 
it depends on the culture of the company, but there are conservative companies who are completely locked down versus innovative companies which have opened up. Both have uh, different sort of challenges. And where I think the equilibrium needs to be is, you know, you're somewhere in the middle where you're balancing innovation with security and privacy part of it. So it's responsible use of data, but it's easier said than done. Right. I, I definitely see the friction between the, the governance team on one side and, and the folks who want greater access to data on the other side. That's going to be a natural point of friction. Do you think there is a, a larger industry move towards enabling larger and, and, and faster, quicker data access, or is that just more like hype that we hear in the industry? No, I think it is. So there is this huge movement, um, and I'll take an example of uh, the business will continue to innovate and and. And so there's there's emphasis on getting building data products. So basically using data to build um, you know better products themselves or get efficiencies. So at the end of the day, generate more revenue or reduce costs. So there's huge emphasis around that part. In some case, if governance and security seen as a bottleneck, people have gone around it and and continue to use that. And so we have seen shadow IT and other things creep up in the part of it. So, but what, where most companies right now is, you know, there's a organization while emphasis on balancing data access with governance. So uh, we are in, in the mode where, you know, more and more it is going towards um, self-service and ability for companies to do things on their own without relying a lot on IT or security teams. And so the trend we are seeing right now with data mesh or, or other pieces of it and uh, is going to be where more companies want frictionless access to the data. So it's not a fact, it's actually happening. And there's a real business value attached to it, right? Because you can, if you can leverage the data faster, you can build better products, you can better understand your customer, reduce your supply chain costs. So there's numerous use cases. and. And more recently with um, AI coming in, I mean, that's a classic example of AI is even more data hungry than your traditional BI part of right. it. Very, very data hungry. And, and so it is more, even more honest, like every CEO in every company is looking to say how they can uh, leverage the power that generative AI brings in to drive use cases. So the need is going to be even more uh, and urgent in, in terms of getting access to data of all parts of the organization. And so it's incumbent on IT and security and governance team to make sure that they do that, but all you also balance privacy and security part of it. So it's no longer kosher to say, we're gonna lock the data and not have everyone access it because you're gonna lose a business value. You're gonna probably fall behind your competitors in some cases. Well, all right. So you've, you've certainly talked about this, but I think it'd be great to get any really specific tips you have. I mean, how do you resolve that big civil war? I mean, how can companies optimize their data access practices? They fully democratize accessing data, but also govern it with secu security at the same time. Are there a couple of really clear tips on that topic? Yeah, absolutely. And this is something we uh, I'm really passionate about. We've spent a lot of time guiding our customers in, and it really boils down to putting together you know, your data governance strategy program and executing that part. So let me let me get into that part. One is really putting a program where you're getting stakeholders from IT and security and governance in and putting together an institutional program where you're laying down the standards and laying down the, the commitment that is needed from everybody to go and adhere to those standards. So, and having a steering committee and doing that is really, really important. So having that buy-in from a top, it really helps putting together a program. And then next phase is really thinking about how do you then execute on that? And, and what I've seen as challenges in many companies is if you try to boil the ocean and nothing gets ever gets done. Mm -hmm. And so some companies have tried to do this governance program as a three year, four year program. And what it happens is like businesses are moving on and, and the world is dynamic. There's a lot that can change in the three years. So you started on something and if it takes two years, three years to do that, so instituting a program where there's clear beachhead use cases that are businesses where you can start implementing these programs, show value, and then templatize that and run this across multiple other businesses this is how we want to do that. And it's more agile, it's more part of it. And this is something where you have to bring the intersection of tools and people and processes part. So, I mean, obviously at Privacy Report, we are, 
really excited about bringing in a very comprehensive technology that helps companies do this without needing a lot of people. And, and we have and built an automation around that piece. So we have reduced the friction that is needed to go and implement a program using technology. So, but we also work with the teams in our customers to institute this in a way that you can go and execute a program that is bringing in value and results. So for at the end of the day, if for governance and security to drive value, they have to align with the business goals. And, mm -hmm. and if you're aligning, so if, if you're able to showcase that companies are able to use data, but the security privacy is embedded in, in specific business case, you get buy-in and you get um, you get you're able to roll this off across the company. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you don't do that, if you do this in isolation, you know, in one plan and do this as a three-year program, uh, you don't get the buy-in from the business teams and they move on and they're doing things that they are continue to do because they have to operate the business part of it. So we firmly believe that you have to bring a these stakeholders aligned and to execute a program which is more agile. Um, and then then doing this as a big bank. Well, you've talked about this in, in broad terms, but in, in detailed terms, how is Privacy Era addressing this data security needs of its clients? I mean, what, what is the Privacy Era advantage? The, the Privacy Era advantage right now is we have built this comprehensive uh, platform that gives you leverages technologies to achieve some of the goals part of it. So one, parts of elements of a governance program is going to be getting consistent visibility on what data you have. And two, being able to implement governance policy on who can access what data and doing that in a seamless way without interrupting your business operation. And three, getting monitoring who's doing what on a continual basis to see if you're adhering to that. And that's the core tenet of the privacy platform. And we have built comprehensive capabilities to do that across any data, structured, unstructured, across any data source, whether it's the on-premise database to a cloud data warehouse like Snowflake. So what it really builds is that companies don't have to build this on their own and have to really think about building these elements. We bring the table, A, first the ability to do sensitive data discovery or across any data store. So at the gate, we can inventory what sensitive data they have, what sort of sensitive data they have, build risk profiles across any data stores and implement programs that really helps you focus on areas where there are high risk. So if you have a data store, which is highly sensitive, uh, you really want to focus on, on that business group or that data store than an area which has very low risk as part of it. So not all governance is born equal as part of it. So the HR data or finance data has a tendency to have be more sensitive than let's say IT logs coming from, from other pieces of it. So we bring in this ability to go and give you a fine comb tooth and a magnifying glass to say where your sensitive data exists. And two, we also give you then to build rules and policies in one place. So you don't have to go and implement governance rules in every data platform, every user. You do it in one place in our platform. And it can be pretty fine grained saying, you know, John Doe can access any data which is being classified as PI. And we can do this in a natural language, business level policies, and we can translate that to system level rules that we can push to any data platform. So what it really means is that you don't, you're, we are cutting out all the manual steps that IT administrators need to do to go and implement system level rules in every place that data is being accessed. So we have really automated, we are bringing that comprehensive layer. So businesses can put these rules in one place and automatically it gets enforced. So when users are running a query or business, your data scientist is trying to access some data, they only get access to the data they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And then we monitor, I mean, we monitor comprehensive monitoring, bring all of the data into one place. We give reports and monitoring around who's doing what. So you not only implement the rules, but you know how, is, how these rules are being enforced on a day-to-day -day basis and, and have constant visibility that can be used by IT and as well as privacy or legal team. So in effect, all the work that customer needs to do, and we, this is based on the learnings we had from many, many years of working on this, we are really put a technology layer to do that. And by doing that, you cut down the friction for companies to do. They don't have to employ a lot of people. They don't have to employ... A lot of capabilities, but we can they can be up and running um, with governance capabilities in a very short time. 
So among other things, the platform assigns each staff member a, a security level? Yeah. So we do this at a, so when you say uh, we can do, uh, we can do both on the data level, we assign security levels to the data itself. So we'll classify and say, this is a high risk data, high classified data, sensitive data versus a non-sensitive data. And then we can classify, we can assign these rules and the users to the classification levels, right? So which users can access only sensitive data and which users can actually go and see public data as part of it. And we can do this as part of it. So we can assign this at a role, we can assign this at a group level, we can assign specific users to it. Uh, we can use other attributes such as location and other ad means to go and add to your rules. So we can say only people belonging to a specific location can access this sensitivity level. So there's this all of these aspects that business look for when determining who can access data. We have provide this very easy capabilities to do that. So then as part of it, but in effect, then we can take that and enforce that on any data store um, is, is some of the work we have done. So we can understand, um, you know, a, a Snowflake database to an Oracle to a S3 file store. And so we have taken care of all the inherent translation that is needed to convert a business level policy to a system level policy. And so without needing a IT administrator to go and interject in the middle as part of it. So in effect, reduced all of that part. So what it means is that, you know, a business can specify a, let's say a marketing domain owner can say, hey, this is marketing data and only specific people in this location can access it. Mm -hmm. They don't need to understand the, the innards of Snowflake or, or, or you, know, you know, Databricks or any other parts. And they can specify a business level rule and then we will implement that, we'll enforce that. So, so tomorrow, any analyst is accessing that specific data, they are governed by those rules and it doesn't matter where they are accessing is the one common policy that uh, governs all of their access. So who is it in the organization or what job title who's responsible for uh, administering the privacy panel? Uh, is it um, the chief security officer, a data person? Yeah, so we that's a fantastic question because, um, you know, when at the end of the day, we see ourselves as a multi-stakeholder multi platform and at the core of it, the administration of rules and policies, is something is a shared responsibility between security, IT, and business. So when I say the security team and IT team have capabilities to implement global rules, let's call it federal laws, right? So they can implement something that governs every kind of data, all kinds of data. And then I, uh, business teams, data owners within business teams can determine local laws very specific to their data. And they have the ability to determine, you know, if you you have a local sheriff who can determine a local law for their town, so they can administer that pieces of it. So it's a multi-stakeholder platform. So we have abilities for multiple stakeholders to interact with that. And then we provide visibility to multiple stakeholders where we can create reports that are useful for a legal privacy or compliance team to know what's happening with the data as well as we can produce reports that is meaningful for an IT person to know what's happening in the platform. So mm -hmm. it's a true platform in that way where we can address um, um, other needs of complex needs of an organizations, but you don't have to start with all stakeholders. We typically can start in a specific business unit with a specific um, persona, which could be an IT persona or a data person. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that the big question is that the future of data access and data security I mean, will it ever get completely easy and seamless where that, that skirmish goes away? I mean, what, what do you see in the future when you look ahead? I think, so um, I've, we have spent quite a bit of time and I personally have spent about more than a, a decade in this space. Um, I think we are coming a long way within even a part where, I mean, even a few years back, the way you used to do governance and security is you dictate a policy on paper and you hope um, everybody follows that part. And, and now we are, we are getting to a point where you can have technology uh, like to ourselves privacy are available that can actually take those business rules and policies and enforce that um, and continuously give visibility across any data stores. In the future, we believe is going to be where uh, privacy security is embedded 
uh, in any processes early on, and it's not bolted on on top of anything. And and so we see these things baked in early on in the development life cycle or building life cycle, and and it's going to be a case where um, where you know it's top of the mind and it's it's sort of natural thing for everybody to think about it, and it's not thought as one business team's responsibility is thought as a responsibility that is shared across multiple business teams. So we are getting to that point we, when, and the future will be where this is a responsibility, uh, whether you call it shift left or other parts where security governance will be embedded within the business teams and they have ability to do that. Um, and they're not relying on one central security team to do that. But that said, the challenge for us and as industry is our ecosystem is not um, is not static, right? So, and, and the challenge for executives is, if you looked at generative AI, it did not practically exist in top of the mind six months back, and now right. everyone is talking about it, and everyone is talking about use cases and other parts. And the challenge for governance security teams always will be that the pace of innovation is going to continue to pick up, and and. And, and so in some ways, we are always playing a little bit of catch up to the pace of innovation happening in the industry. And that's, and we have to accept that piece of it. But what we have seen even in generative AI use cases, as an example, is companies have put together sharing committees to really think about responsible AI and what to do with the data part of it. They like, so the world has changed to a world where, you know, we are thinking about responsible use of data on day one or day zero. And, and that's the exciting piece of it. So most companies are really trying to embed responsible practices early on with generative AI. They're not doing this saying, let's get the use cases out and then we'll figure out what security and governance. They're saying, hey, let's figure out what security and governance. So I'm really excited to see that part. And I think that's where the industry is going to be. But we will never have these challenges go away. That innovation pace is going to continue to exceed and it's for the governance and security industries. And that's what we are committed to make sure that we are always innovating and making sure we are keeping up with the pace the data industry is going. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you said it when you said that the challenges are not static. There's no doubt the challenges are definitely not static. Uh, Balaji, a lot of good stuff. Um, thank you for sharing your insight today. And then please come back and talk with us again sometime. I love the opportunity and thank you for that. And thank you for your time and looking forward to uh, follow-up sessions or any other topic that you want to talk about. But thanks again, James. Sure.